What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is show you the difference between the solutions of this equation, this equation, and this equation. And I'm going to do that by looking at the algebraic process, look at the graphical process, as well as using the unit circle. So if you're learning how to solve trigonometric equations and you're getting a little bit stuck on the multiple or half angles and how that impacts our solutions, in this video, we're going to look at the solutions on the interval of zero to two pi, as well as all of the solutions. So let's go ahead and get started. Now let's go and focus on this first example. So I have a two sine squared of theta minus one equals zero. Now, whenever you're solving your trigonometric equations and you only have one trigonometric function, the first thing you're going to always want to do is use your inverse operations to go ahead and isolate our trigonometric function. The first thing we're going to do is actually, I'm just going to do these one at a time. So I'm going to add the one first. That's going to leave me with a two sine of squared of theta is equal to a positive one. Then I'm going to divide by two on both sides. And that's going to leave me with a sine squared of theta equals a one half. Now the sine squared of theta, remember that's technically the same thing as a sine of theta squared equals one half. So if I want to get rid of the square, I just have to use the inverse operation, which is going to be taking the square root of both sides. So therefore I have a sine of theta is equal to, now remember when we introduce the square root, it's really important to include plus or minus. Now I can break up the square root as to the top as well as to the bottom. And then what you can recognize here is if I didn't want the radical to be on the denominator, I could rationalize the denominator by multiplying by a square root of two over two. Now the square root of one is just going to be one. Therefore I'm going to get a final equation of sine of theta is equal to a plus or minus the square root of two over two. Now that's going to be approximately 0.7. Now, the reason why I want to bring that up is because we haven't found the solutions yet. Remember what we're looking for is what is theta equal to. And it's really important to understand on what interval are we looking for when theta is going to be equal. So when you look at the graph of sine, you know that this graph continues in the both the positive and the negative direction. So let's go and take a look at the graph and therefore we can better hopefully understand our solutions to this equation. I'm just going to do the initial period, which is going to be from zero to two pi. And we'll just go up to one and we'll go down to negative one. So I'll just kind of list it right there. And we can say the half distance marker will be like here, there, and there. And the initial period here looks something like this. Okay. So this graph is not going to be perfect, but hopefully you recognize, yes, that is the sine graph. Now, when we're looking for the solutions, remember this is the sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of two over two. And that's roughly like, as we mentioned, going to be like 0.7. So if we said 0.7 would be like right here and negative 0.7 would be like here. Now what we can do is go ahead and draw a horizontal line to be able to identify where the graph is going to intersect with these two horizontal onto lines because that's going to be the solution. Because remember, we're looking for when is sine of theta, which is this graph, going to be equal to a square root of two over two. So we can say, you know, this is the equation of y equals a sine of theta. And the y equations and my two dashed lines is going to be y equals the square root of two over two or y equals a negative square root of two over two. Now to identify where these intersection points are occurring, what we're going to want to do is now look at the unit circle to identify these x values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a nice little circle. Now I know my circle is not perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be. What I'm looking for is when is the Y coordinate going to be a square root of two over two? Because remember the sine of theta represents the Y coordinate on the unit circle. Hopefully with your familiarity with the unit circle, you can recognize these four angles and points that I have here. So this is going to be square root of two over two, square root of two over two. This can be a negative square root of two over two, comma square root of two over two. This one's going to be a negative square root of two over two, comma negative square root of two over two. And this one's going to be a square root of two over two, comma negative square root of two over two. Now we just need to know what the recognize these angles. So hopefully you recognize this angle is going to be a pi over four. This angle is a three pi over four. This angle is a five pi over four. And the last angle right here is going to be a seven pi over four. That's exactly where these solutions are. This is going to be a pi over four. This solution was a three pi over four. The X value of this point is going to be a five pi over four. And then over here is going to be a seven pi over four. So when we're looking for the solutions on an interval of zero to two pi, we can now write in our solution here. So if I said a is going to be, let's see, from zero to two pi, I can now write in these solutions that theta is going to equal a pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and a seven pi over four. Now, what about if this graph continues? What about if this graph, right, keeps on continuing in the positive direction or keeps on continuing in the negative direction? The one thing I want you to recognize is what is the distance between each of these solutions? And yes, hopefully you recognize the distance is every two pi over four, which can be simplified into pi halves, right? Which is a quarter of the unit circle. And if you look down in the unit circle, you can see this is exactly as playing out. You can see the distance between each of these solution points is indeed going to be pi over four. So if I wanted to continue in this positive direction, I recognize there's going to be a solution every pi over four. So when I'm looking for a solution set, when I'm, let's say, looking for all solutions between negative infinity and positive infinity, it's important to understand that this graph can continue going in the positive direction as well as continue going in the negative direction. If I take the smallest positive answer, 
that I have, which is pi over four, and I add pi halves to it, that's gonna take me to my next solution. If I add pi halves again, that's gonna take me to my next solution. And I can keep on doing that forever. I can also go in the negative direction. If I took pi over four and I subtracted a pi halves, that's gonna also take me to another solution. So the way that I can write this for all solutions is theta is gonna equal a pi over four plus a pi halves. Now again, I can add pi halves or I could subtract pi halves infinite many times. So to do that, so to represent that, we're gonna use an integer which we'll call n. Now that is the difference between all solutions as well as if we just want to find the solution on an interval, namely zero between two pi, which represents only the initial period or within the unit circle. Now, what do we do when we have a problem with this two inside of the function? So we're going to subtract a one on both sides and then I'll have a two sine of two theta equals negative one. And then, you know, you'll divide by two here because again, the two is being multiplied on the outside. And then what I'm left with is a sine of two theta equals a negative one half. But it's very important to recognize this two is inside of the function. It's not outside of the function. Right now, our function has been isolated. To better find the solutions, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to kind of think about this in terms of using substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let beta equal equal a two theta. Now I can just write the equation as a sine of beta is equal to a negative one half. So now I can go back to my understanding of the graph as the graphical approach, as well as my understanding at with the unit circle to understand what my solutions are going to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically graph the um, initial period one more time again. We'll just go to zero to two pi and let's go ahead and go up to one, go down to negative one, right? And then we'll say that's the middle point. Um, we'll go from here and go to there. This just help me graph this. Now our solution in this case, negative one half, we know that's going to equal negative 0.5, right? So I'll go ahead and list this negative 0.5. That's going to be half there. And now I'll just draw a nice little horizontal line again to understand our solutions. So now we can, we can see here we have two intersection points. So right now we have, right now we have two intersection points that are going on. However, again, we need to understand, well, what are these values? Where are these crossing? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my unit circle and I'm going to say, well, when is sine of theta equal to a negative one half? So I'll go back, create this nice little unit circle here. And I'll think about this. That's going to be from this angle as well as this angle. Now this point is going to be a negative square root of three over two comma negative one half. And this one is going to be a positive square root of three over two comma negative one half. Again, we're looking for signs. So we're only concerned about when the Y coordinate is going to be equal a negative one half. Now this angle right here is going to be a seven pi over six. And this angle right here is going to be 11 pi over six. Now to solve an equation when we're using this substitution for these multiple angles, what I like to do is solve it for beta first, and then we're going to swap out beta for our two theta, which was our original equation. Now, whenever I'm solving a multiple angle using substitution, what I'm going to do is find all the solutions first, and then I'll find the intervals from zero to two pi. So this is actually in the reverse order that I did in the last example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve for beta, but I'm going to find all the solutions, right? And again, what I want you to recognize here is that there's no even interval between these two solutions, right? If I have this solution, if this graph is going to continue in the positive or in the negative direction, these are not evenly distanced from each other. So if I want to find the next solution, what I'm going to have to do is add another two pi, right? basically here's my solution. I'm going to have to go all the way around the circle again to get to another solution. Unlike in the last example, again, these are all evenly spaced out from each other. So that's why we just added a pi halves. These are not evenly spaced out. So if I want to get to the next solution, I'm going to have to redo a whole period of another graph in the positive or in the negative direction. So my solution in this case is just going to be a beta equals what angle, which I have is a seven pi over six plus a two pi n, because that's how far I'm going to have to go to get to the solution again. I'm going to have to add a a whole revolution of the unit circle. And then over here, I'm going to have beta equals an 11 pi over six plus two pi n. Now, again, this is going to be all the solutions, right? So what we're doing is again, that reverse order from what we last did. However, it's really important to recognize beta is equal to two theta. So we're not solving for beta. We're solving for two theta. So now I have two theta equals a seven pi over six plus a two pi n. And in this case, we have a two theta is equal to 11 pi over six plus a two pi n. Now to solve for theta, which is exactly what we were originally trying to do, I'm just gonna divide by two on both sides. So I'll just divide by two in there. So therefore I'm left with a, so again, this is gonna be for answer A, this is gonna be from negative infinity to infinity. I'm gonna have theta is equal to a seven pi over 12 plus a pi n, right? You're gonna distribute that two into both those terms. And then over here, I'm also gonna have a theta is equal to two, 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 a 11 pi over 12 plus a pi n. Now comes up the question, well, what about, that's for answer when a is between negative infinity and infinity. What about for answer b? What about if I wanna find on the interval from zero to two pi? So for that, it's really important to kind of recognize, well, where are these answers? Like, where did these solutions come from? The seven pi over 12? Because if you think about it, if you think about like pi on this graph, here's pi. Seven 
pi over 12 and 11 pi over 12 are less than pi. That means those intersection points are going on right here. So the important thing I want you to recognize is let's look back at this graph. This is the graph of y equals sine of theta. So if I wanted to graph y equals two sine of theta, what we need to recognize what's happening here. So this is y equals a sine of theta. If I want to graph y equals sine of two theta, it's really important for you to recognize that the period has just got shrunken by two, right? Now the period is going to be a pi. So what I'll do is I'm now going to go ahead and graph that. So that's now going to look something like this. And then what I want you to recognize is I can actually do two full periods all between zero and two pi. So now what I want you to see is these are your solutions right here. Your seven pi over 12 is right there. Your 11 pi over 12 is right there. Now what we need to do is figure out, well, what are these other two solutions that are going on? This one and this one. Are these evenly spaced out? And guess what? They are. They're pi away from each other. If I want to find the interval zero to two pi, all I need to do is say, well, let n represent one. So I'll do is a theta is equal to a seven pi over 12 plus pi. Now again, we can rewrite pi as a 12 pi over 12, right? You can just multiply by 12 over 12. So therefore theta is going to equal a 19 pi over 12. Now, is that still less than two pi, right? And again, if you think about two pi in terms of 12s, that would be a 24 pi over 12. So yes, this does work. And then let's do the other example here. Um, I could do a 11 pi over 12. So I'd say theta equals a 11 pi over 12. And let's go ahead and add a 12 pi over 12. Cause again, what is that equal to? That's equal to pi, right? So when I do that, I get theta equals a 23 pi over 12, which again is just less than two pi. And you can see that's where that answer is right there. Now, again, this is only representing the answers between zero and two pi. And now what I'll do is I'll just rewrite these as a solution set here, which which is going to be a seven pi over 12, 11 pi over 12, a 19 pi over 12, and a 23 pi over 12. All right, now in the last example, we're gonna do follow the exact same process. We're gonna use our inverse operations and then we're gonna use substitution to go ahead and solve the equation. Okay, so now we have sine of theta is equal to one half. Now again, we can just look at the answer from a graphical approach as well as from the unit circle. Okay, so a couple things we recognize here is I graph the general equation for y equals sine of theta, and then that's equal to a one half. So therefore I drove the horizontal line and we have two intersection points on the interval of zero to two pi. We can also recognize, we can also find these solutions here by drawing the unit circle. And I recognize that the y coordinate is equal to one half at these two angles. Now, again, knowing our angles on the unit circle, I know that this is going to be a pi over six, and this angle is going to be a five pi over six. Now, just like in the last example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna find all the solutions first before we go ahead and find the intervals of zero to two pi. So what I'll do is I'm gonna say, so therefore alpha equals a pi over six plus a two pi n. And the reason why I have to add a two pi n is because they're not evenly spaced out. So for me to get to my next solution, I'm gonna have to add Add another two pi, right? Because if you think about this, you know, if you look at this graph, as this continues, I'm gonna have to add another two pi to get to my next solution. And then my other solution here is alpha is going to equal a five pi over six plus a two pi, right? And again, n is positive or negative because it can go in the positive and the negative direction. But again, ladies and gentlemen, remember we're not actually solving for alpha, we're solving for theta. We're just letting alpha equal a theta divided by two. So now we're just going to replace that. So theta divided by two equals a pi over six plus a two pi n. And then here we we have theta divided by two equals a five pi over six plus two pi n. Okay, so now when I wanna solve for theta, what do I need to do? I need to multiply by two on both sides. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna multiply by two on both sides, all right? In this case, I'll just say multiply by two. So what, now what I'm going to get here is my final answer, which is gonna be for all solutions, negative infinity to infinity is gonna give me a theta equals a two pi over six plus a four pi n and a theta equals a 10 pi over six plus four pi n. Now we could obviously go ahead and simplify this, right? So that's going to be a pi over three plus four pi n, and then a theta equals a five pi over three plus a four pi n. Okay. So that's going to be all of our solutions, but what if we want to find the interval on zero to two pi, right? Now I, hopefully you recognize that pi over three and five pi over three are indeed our solutions here on zero to two pi. So what I can do is I can include those on our interval from zero to two pi. So therefore my solution set is going to be a pi over three and a five pi over three. Okay. Now here's where things are going to get kind of interesting. What does my graph look like when I have a theta divided by two? Well, it's really important to remember in the last 
example, when I had a two theta, what that did was that compressed the graph to a period of pi. So I was able to include two cycles of the graph. That's why I had four solutions. However, when I when I have theta divided by two, that's going to expand the period to a four pi. So that graph's going to look something like this. And now you can see there's actually only two solutions, right? Because this graph is going to continue, right? And eventually complete its period. But rather than the period being at two pi, the period is now going to complete in four pi. So guess what? The only two solutions that are going to make this equation true. So therefore, the only two solutions that work on the interval of zero to two pi is going to be a pi over three and a five pi over three. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you need more examples or reference material on solving trigonometric equations, check my examples down below or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.